They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I don't know about all that, but it is incredibly easy to make promises when we're really excited about something new. That's a pie crust promise, easily made, easily broken. So let's get into it. Welcome to Gobi Church, I am Pastor Shane. Be sure to crush that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to find out when we drop a new video. Now in 2015, the world watched as nearly 200 nations came together to sign the Paris Agreement. At the Paris Climate Conference in December of 2015, 195 countries reached agreement on the first truly global agreement to control greenhouse gas emissions and confront the impacts of climate change. It was a groundbreaking accord that aimed to address the looming threat of climate change. The agreement represented a collective commitment to curb greenhouse gas emissions with the goal of limiting global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and, if possible, keeping the increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. This wasn't merely an environmental issue, it was a moral imperative, as failure to act would result in catastrophic consequences for the ecosystems, economies, and communities across the globe. We want to keep the average warm of the earth below two degrees celsius because if we don't it's going to be really bad for everyone but the problem is no one country can handle this because even the biggest contributors the u.s and china together make up less than half of the pie everyone needs to agree to make changes or no one benefits the united states is one of the world's largest carbon emitters and we played a pivotal role in shaping the agreement by committing to significant emission reductions and rallying other nations to do the same the U.S. demonstrated leadership at this critical moment. However, this commitment proved to be short-lived because in 2017, the U.S. formally withdrew from the Paris Agreement, citing concerns about the economic impact and perceived inequities in the deal. The real, real concern here is that America's absence from the Paris Agreement could make other countries less inclined to meet their commitments. And remember, that could quickly become catastrophic. And while we have since rejoined the agreement, the decision to leave it in the first place sent shockwaves through the international community, undermining the momentum of the global climate effort and casting doubt on the ability of the world to even meet the targets set out in the agreement. Brazil, another key player in the global climate arena, also began to falter in its commitments. Under President Bolsonaro, deforestation in the Amazon surged, directly contradicting Brazil's promise under the Paris Agreement. Bolsonaro's administration has already overseen historic levels of deforestation, rolling back regulations on protected areas in the Amazon and slashing the budget of Brazil's main environmental agency by 24 percent. The global community is now far off track in meeting its goals of the Paris Agreement. The continued rise in global temperatures is leading to more frequent and severe natural disasters from hurricanes and wildfires, and it's exacerbating food and water insecurities in vulnerable regions. The story of the Paris Agreement serves as a stark reminder of the far-reaching impact of broken promises. When nations fail to follow through on commitments of such magnitude, the consequences are not just immediate, but enduring. They affect millions of lives and the future of our planet. After all, why would other countries hold up their side of the bargain if the country that benefited the most from the carbon dioxide currently in the atmosphere shirks their responsibility? This story underscores the critical importance of integrity and accountability in global commitments, as the cost of neglecting them is far too great to bear. The story of the Paris Agreement serves as a pretty good example of how grand commitments, even those with the best of intentions, can falter when the initial enthusiasm fades. This pattern is not just limited to international agreements either, it reflects a common human experience. Just as nations struggle to maintain their momentum on the global promises, we often find ourselves battling the same challenges in our personal and communal commitments. We've all experienced that surge of excitement when starting something new, a New Year's resolution, a church project, or even a financial pledge. We think this is the start of something big. In those early moments, our enthusiasm is high and our intentions are sincere. We're driven by a vision of what could be, motivated by the promise of positive change or the satisfaction of achieving something meaningful. But as time goes on, the initial momentum can start to fade. I'm so tired. Life gets busy, distractions creep in, and the challenges of sustained effort become more apparent. What began as a passionate commitment can slowly turn into a forgotten task, or worse, a source of guilt as we realize we're not following through on what we set out to do. 
This pattern is all too common. We begin with the best of intentions, but maintaining that energy over time is often the real challenge. We can't keep this up. Whether it's sticking to a new diet or staying engaged in a long-term project or continuing to support a cause we believe in, the difficulty lies not in the start, but in the perseverance. The impact of these unfulfilled commitments can be really significant. When we don't follow through, it can lead to disappointment, both in ourselves and in those who are counting on us. It actually was a huge disappointment. It can also undermine our confidence in taking on future commitments as we start to question whether we really can see them through. This isn't just about big commitments either. It's something we encounter in our everyday lives. The key to overcoming this challenge is to recognize the importance of sustained effort and to find ways to keep that initial spark alive. It might involve setting smaller, more manageable goals, seeking support from others, or just regularly reminding ourselves of the reasons we made the commitment in the first place. Remember why you're doing this. Ultimately, the value of commitment lies not in the moment it's made, but in the dedication to see it through to the end. It's in that perseverance that real change happens and where we find the true fulfillment of our promises. We've got this, we've trained for this. It's incredibly easy to make promises when we're caught up in the energy of a new idea or the excitement of a fresh start. It's in those moments our vision is clear, our motivation is strong, and the path forward seems straightforward. Whether it's a bold commitment to a global initiative like the Paris Agreement or a personal resolution to improve some aspect of our lives, that initial burst of enthusiasm can make us feel unstoppable. We're eager to see change, to make an impact, and to achieve the goals we've set out for ourselves or others. However, as the days and weeks go by, life inevitably gets busy. Very Zoom busy, in. very busy, she's too busy. The demands of our daily routines unexpected challenges and competing priorities start to encroach on the time and energy we initially dedicated to our commitments. The excitement that once fueled us begins to wane and the clear path we saw at the beginning becomes cluttered with obstacles. This is when the real challenge of commitment comes into play. It's easy to underestimate the preparation and persistence required to follow through on our promises. Without a solid plan and the resilience to push through the difficulties, even the most sincere commitments can fall by the wayside. The gap between intention and action widens and what once seemed achievable starts to feel overwhelming. It should be clear that making a promise is the easy part. It's easy to promise the impossible. Keeping it is where the true test lies. It requires not just enthusiasm, but also a sustained effort, careful planning, and the ability to adapt when things don't go as expected. When we think ahead about these challenges, it can help us prepare better, set more realistic goals, and find ways to maintain our enthusiasm even when the initial excitement fades. When we do that, we can bridge the gap between what we intend to do and what we actually accomplish, and we can ensure that our promises are not just made, but kept. So bringing this around to our scripture passage today, I want you to consider how this struggle to follow through on commitments might apply to our spiritual lives and our stewardship. What does it mean to truly prepare to act on our promises? Which brings us to our scripture, which is 2 Corinthians 9 verses 1 through 5, where it says this, There's nothing further I could add about your efforts for God's people in Judea. I know you are ready. I bragged on you throughout Macedonia, telling them how the people in Achaia have been prepared since last year, and your passion has been contagious. Still, I thought it would be best to send these brothers and sisters ahead to help you finish the final details so all my bragging wouldn't be for nothing. If some of the Macedonians decide to travel with me, all of us would be more than embarrassed if we arrived and you weren't ready to give after the way we've been going on about you. So to help you get your previously promised gift ready, it made sense to me to ask the brothers and sisters to go on ahead so you will have all the time you need to put it together as planned and so it doesn't look thrown together or coerced. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. The passive aggressive nature of this passage is mind blowing, but let's unpack it a little bit. In our passage, Paul addresses the Corinthians regarding a financial contribution they had previously promised to make for the saints in Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem was facing significant hardships and the apostle Paul had been organizing a collection from the Gentile churches to support them. Obviously they need our help. The Corinthians had initially shown great enthusiasm and readiness to contribute to this cause. However, as time passed, Paul became concerned that their zeal might have waned. He writes to urge them to prepare and fulfill their commitment. He emphasizes the importance of readiness and follow through. There are a few key themes that he points out here that I want to focus on. First is readiness and enthusiasm. Paul begins by commending the Corinthians for their initial eagerness to participate in the collection. He notes that their readiness was not only commendable but also inspiring to others. However, 
Paul also reminds them that enthusiasm alone is not enough. It must be coupled with preparation and action. True stewardship goes beyond the initial excitement and involves a sustained effort to carry out one's commitments. Paul is effectively saying that it's one thing to make a promise in the heat of the moment, but true integrity is shown when the promise is fulfilled, even after the initial enthusiasm fades. The second theme is the influence on others. Paul highlights that the Corinthians' readiness to give had already had a positive impact on other people, particularly the Macedonians who were inspired by the Corinthians' commitment. This shows the ripple effect that a commitment and generous spirit can have. The example set by the Corinthians had spurred others on to action, which made it all the more important for them to follow through. Their failure to do so would not only reflect poorly on them, but would also discourage others who had been motivated by their example. Another theme is the call to integrity. Paul's message is not merely about the act of giving, but about the integrity of fulfilling one's promises. He's urging the Corinthians to maintain the integrity of their commitment by ensuring that they are prepared when the time comes to make the contribution. Paul is concerned that if they're not ready, both he and the Corinthians are going to be embarrassed if they're found unprepared when the collection is made. This call to integrity underscores the broader principle that true discipleship involves not just making commitments, but seeing them through with faithfulness and reliability. Yes, I can see that you'd want to keep your word. Here's the bottom line, y'all. True stewardship is about more than just good intentions or initial enthusiasm. It's about being prepared in advance to act on our commitments and to fulfill our promises. Paul's exhortation to the Corinthians serves as a reminder that our commitments, whether financial or otherwise, should be made with the understanding that they require preparation and perseverance to see them through to completion. In this way, we not only honor our word, but also strengthen the community of believers. We set an example of faithfulness and integrity. But we must set a good example, mustn't we? So what do we do with all of this? Well, as we consider Paul's message to the Corinthians about fulfilling their commitments to the collection of the saints, it's important to bring this principle closer to home and apply it to our own lives, especially in the context of our commitments as members of the United Methodist Church. Each of us has made commitments, whether financial, spiritual, or relational, that reflect our values and priorities. What do you care about? When people become members of the United Methodist Church, we make vows to uphold the church with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. These commitments are not just words spoken in the moment of spiritual enthusiasm. They're ongoing responsibilities that require thoughtful preparation and consistent follow-through. So ask yourself, how well am I honoring these commitments? Am I giving my time, my talents, and resources as I have promised? Have I remained faithful in prayer and presence within the community? It's easy to be enthusiastic when we first make these commitments, but it's the daily actions, the ongoing contributions that truly demonstrate our faithfulness. Intent doesn't matter, actions do. Paul's challenge to the Corinthians to prepare in advance can also serve as a challenge to us today. Are we truly ready to fulfill our commitments or do we find ourselves relying solely on the initial excitement we felt when we made them? It's crucial to assess whether we are making concrete plans to give, serve, and act in the areas where we've made commitments. Now this might involve setting aside regular time for prayer or planning our financial giving or intentionally seeking opportunities to serve others within the wider church. How can I help? So take a moment to consider your readiness in these areas. Are there commitments you've made that you've not fully prepared to fulfill? What steps can you take today to ensure that your actions align with your promises? Whether it's adjusting your budget to honor the financial pledge or setting specific goals for how you will serve in the church, these practical steps are essential for moving from good intentions to faithful action. You have to do something. Ultimately, our commitments are a matter of integrity. Just as Paul urged the Corinthians to maintain the integrity of their commitment, we are called to do the same. Integrity means doing what we said we would do even when it's difficult or when the initial excitement has worn off. It means being reliable and trustworthy and reflecting the faithfulness of God in our own lives. Look, you made a commitment, you will honor that commitment. As members of the United Methodist Church, our integrity in fulfilling our commitments strengthens not only our spiritual walk, but also the life of the church. When we follow through on our promises, we contribute to a culture of faithfulness and trust within the community, and we inspire others to do the same. So let's commit or recommit ourselves to the promises we have made 
both to God and to one another. Let's move beyond enthusiasm to true readiness and ensure that we are prepared to act on our commitments with integrity that reflects our faith. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's more than ready. And just as individual believers are called to maintain their personal commitments, the collective integrity of the church community is equally important. The strength and reputation of the church are often measured not just by its words or its beliefs, but by its actions, how well it follows through on its commitments. Follow through on your commitments. This is especially true in the context of mission and outreach. When a church pledges to serve the broader community, whether through financial support, volunteer efforts, or other forms of ministry, it must be steadfast in fulfilling those promises. A church that is known for its integrity and reliability in every aspect of its mission becomes a beacon of trust and faithfulness in the wider community. It sets an example of Christian stewardship that extends beyond the congregation. It demonstrates to others that the church is not just a place of worship, but a committed partner in addressing the needs of the community. When people see a church that consistently meets its commitments, it fosters a deep Deep level of trust and respect which can open doors to new opportunities for ministry and outreach. To ensure that the church as a whole is ready to meet its commitments, there must be a collective effort to prepare in advance. I'll be prepared! Yeah, we'll be prepared! This means not only planning and organizing resources, but also developing a culture of readiness and responsibility within the congregation. Just as Paul urged the Corinthians to be prepared so that their generosity would not be found lacking, the church must also ensure that it's fully equipped to meet the needs to... I'm over here thinking about using um, the be prepared from uh, the Lion King. <laughs> so I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Just as Paul urges the Corinthians to be prepared so that their generosity would not be found lacking, the church must also ensure that it's fully equipped to meet the needs it's committed to addressing. By preparing together and being proactive in our mission, we can ensure that the church remains a reliable and effective force for good in the community. And this not only strengthens the church's witness, but it also honors the commitments made in the name of Christ, and it reflects his faithfulness for every endeavor. Like Jesus. So, as we move forward, let's not just be people of good intentions, but people of faithful actions. As we prepare our hearts and our resources, let's ensure that our commitments reflect the trust that we have in God and the love that we have for others. Amen? Amen. All right. Hey, if you found value in this video, I highly recommend you go check out our recent video on generosity and you'll see it on the screen somewhere here in a second. I also want to invite you to our Go Be Church Talk Facebook group. It's the place where we help others love like Jesus every day. You can find the link on the screen and in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well and go be Jesus to someone else this week and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. When Polish citizens welcomed Ukrainian refugees into their homes, they didn't just provide shelter. They offered a lifeline, a message that said, you are not alone. We stand with you. There were signs up that said, Ukrainians, we are waiting for you here in Poland. Welcome to Poland. This kind of generosity breaks down the barriers of us and them, and it builds bridges that connect us on a deeper, more human level. It's a reminder that our giving isn't limited by proximity or familiarity. It's an opportunity to reflect God's boundless love, a love that knows no borders and no boundaries.